uh, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not it you know, inspires people to look into actual medical sources about vaccination and read them thoroughly, or whether or not it turns people more hardcore into all of this is a government conspiracy because we got quarantined for three months and I didn't even cough one time. Or if yeah. we're still doing this in 18 months, that is ridiculous. And that's a different kind of failure. Hey everyone. And welcome to episode 34 of the Fakertarians podcast. I'm your host, John Hudak, along with Jeremy Kantorowicz, Archie Flower, Josh Helditch, uh, Jordan Logue, and Chris Cross. So today, well, Jordan is a co-host sometimes, but today we have him on to talk about COVID. So, Jordan, I'm going to let you introduce yourself and tell us why you want to murder us all with microchip vaccines. <sighs> See, I know you're joking, <laughs> but it's been it's been 18 months of this, and really... I got into politics before that because I was hired as a consultant for various Facebook pages who got tired of anti-vaxxers trolling political arguments with conspiracy theories. Um, I'm Jordan. I graduated from Georgia Southern University with a bachelor's in biology in 2013 and then from the University of uh, the Mercer University College of Medicine in 2015 with a master's degree in biomedical science. I'm currently enrolled at Florida State College of Medicine. Um, I'm a PhD student in biomedical research, specifically in neuroscience. And uh, the clips you guys just saw were from me on Spike Cohen's podcast in March of 2020, explaining how screwed we were. And um, <laughs> damn, I'm a prophet, ain't I? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you, you make us look all very, very dumb. <laughs> I mean, how how many credentials do you have? Um, I, bet, I bet that was ten percent of it. You probably got like four hundred <laughs> other credentials to your name. I, those You're are probably a lord or something as well, aren't you? Uh, I'm trying. Uh, <laughs> but but are any of them New York Times bestsellers? And do you visit islands? Uh, well, some of them were in marine. Like some of my publications are actually in marine biology, so I have actually uh, published well. documents. Yeah from an island before so um <laughs> i've got that going for me perfect that's uh, that's all that you need that's the only important credentials yeah. in i've island. made no money from any of them because they're peer-reviewed and i don't think i get any of the money from people who pay to see them but that's how it goes <laughs> so is, is there anything that you don't know um so you're a marine biology you just said and neuroscience i mean okay so listen that sounds way more impressive than it actually is Oh, it sounds uh, very impressive. No, here, <laughs> in undergrad, they were just, uh, I was trying to get into any lab that would let me do research so that I could put that I had published papers on my CV and then apply to medical schools with it. And the lab that I got into uh, took me crab fishing. And okay. then we published on uh, fiddler crab populations on an island off the coast of Florida. And uh, that got me into medical school. But I have two publications about crab crab fishing <laughs> so crab, my crab, crab fishing got you into medical school that's a very very strange sort of road Listen, you went down american there. public schools are nonsense but it worked out well i suppose so <laughs> i mean you wound up in neuroscience it's worked out pretty good eh? yeah okay so uh jeremy put together some clips of jordan on spike's show before so i think jeremy you wanted to go yeah. through those and Kind of have Jordan yeah. comment on them. So this, when exactly were these clips from? Was it March 2020 or so? Yeah, it was March 2020. Um, it was, uh, I believe, like Friday, the like the, around the 15th, 16th, somewhere in there. Um, it was right after the NBA had shut, had originally shut down, and they had just canceled the March Madness basketball tournament so that Florida State could not win. I was. I mean, they I weren't going to win anyway. Shut up, Hudak. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I listen. I had money in it. Come on, man. Just let him play. <laughs> so um, it, it was right around the time that uh, the federal government had finally admitted that the cat was out of the bag, and uh, that we were about to go through it. Which uh, anyone who had been paying attention to medical literature had been probably aware of since you know significantly before that. Um, we were having like talks about it at school uh, in 
at least a month or two before this um, because people were aware of the, like, the virologists and public health professors were aware of what was going on in China, even if the federal government wasn't. Uh, the plan so, to make everyone think that the flu is COVID and to yeah, John, inject us yeah, with microchips. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And drink bleach. Yeah. Well, no, well. No, inject you, the bleach. You inject oh, bleach. inject it. Yeah. Sorry, my mistake. Yeah, they were, you can't drink it and have it get into the lungs. Now, if you hold someone down and waterboard them, which don't get me wrong, Trump would do, um, you could get it into the lungs, but whatever. That wow, was, that we're supporting was, people with bleach. That sounds <laughs> nice. I mean, here's the thing. This was before Donald Trump even like had the thought of doing that. This was back when Donald Trump was still trying to pay off German pharmaceutical companies. Yeah, I don't think he thinks, to be fair. No. <laughs> okay, so let's jump into some of these clips. So we're, we're not yeah. just talking about this for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> All right, All so let's see. Um, let's see. So let's, yeah, let's start with um, our, our tech guy. Um, if you want to queue up the can't prevent, can mitigate video. Oh, God. You have this many cases or this many potentially have a vaccine. Basic formula that comes out. Mm -hmm. oh. That's an awesome video we got there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, we get the audio at least, so that's not the worst. So I guess we're <laughs> going to have audio. And... We're going to be on a blank screen. Did we test yeah. this before the show? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to start reading that Titano Boa article? Because I will. <laughs> <laughs> have you tried turning it off and on again? Uh, well. Do -do 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 -do. So this is a clip about... Uh, can't prevent, can't mitigate. No, this was when we were talking about, uh, not that I remember this word for word from eight, from however long ago this was. Uh, we were talking about how the ideal situation for, for preventing COVID from having widespread impact on the United States was to never let it take root in the United States after, you know, the initial infection, which involves, you know, contact tracing and making the public aware of the fact that the virus was now present. Um, which our government did the opposite of. Um, and so we, I believe that we went through the case study of uh, the first identified, at least publicly identified case of COVID in the United States, which was a guy from the Seattle area who had traveled into the U.S. from Wuhan, China, and did not go to the hospital for his symptoms for another, I believe, 10 days to two weeks. And... How in that period of time, he was the only identified case, but the rest of it had not, you know, come out. So in the intervening two weeks, he could have spread that to however many people that could have spread to however many more people from them and on and on it goes. And so now we're in this, which is actually 18 or how many months has it been? Is it 15 months now? Oh uh, no, it's May, June, July, we're going August. on seventeen. Yeah, yeah, seventeen. Yeah. And the initial, the initial comment that was made by someone in the federal government that I thought was ridiculous at the time was that uh, we could have been on that initial, you know, quarantine for a full eighteen months, uh, which I thought was ridiculous. And you know, uh, I've been wrong before. Um. Although, to be fair, quarantine actually means quarantine and not quarantine only some of the people some of the time if they feel like it, kind of. And so you can make the argument that the United States has never actually quarantined because who actually, like, what smaller stores closed because they, you know, couldn't get exemptions from the lockdowns. So like major grocery stores, pharmacies and wherever else stayed open, but the smaller shops had to close because they couldn't stay open. And so here we are. The spread never stopped and we absolutely cannot get people to get <laughs> we can't get the specific areas of the country to vaccinate and so we're just kind of stuck. And we will remain stuck. So here we go. All right, here we go. Okay, hopefully you can get the audio, too. <laughs> you, did you click the audio button? Oh. Did you click the audio button on the screen share? 
Um, because there's a button. One. There's a button you have to click. God, I miss my hair. It's share audio. It's in the bottom left hand corner. Well, let's that, see. That, that is one massive bonnet you got there. <laughs> All right. No, I am not seeing it on my end. Okay, so you click share. You click share screen. You click share screen again, and then it says share audio checkbox in the bottom left. Oh, okay, share screen. Oh. Share screen. Okay, share. Have you pulled out a biology book? <laughs> uh, this is actually Jane Way's Immunology, uh, eighth edition. Okay. It has better graphics than the seventh edition. Uh, we have really good figures for Jack Stat Pathways. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, is that what you just do for fun? Just learn every single science ever? Uh, well, I did have to take this as a class. This book cost three hundred dollars. So. Wow, three hundred dollars! Jesus Christ, that's expensive. Yeah, I keep them because the resale value is. Well, trash. I keep it too if it was three hundred bucks. Okay. Okay, are we good? Um, so I am going to have to do it this way. Yep, that's all my stuff. But this is also one of the reasons why, if anyone asks me anything about like, um. You can open to like chapter three of this book and see if when someone tries to tell you any kind of conspiracy about vaccines. <laughs> I like that. The, the way that you went, if someone asked me about, um, and then nothing. <laughs> so ask you about biology? Uh, well, vaccines this many specifically. cases or this many uh, oh. people who are infected and the fatality rate is, they say, 10 times higher than the flu. Let's just put it at that number. That's right. still a lot. What's what's going on here? <laughs> We're trying, guys. <laughs> okay, let me try this again. Yeah, that was back when they were trying to argue about what the fatality rate was because it was like ten percent in Italy and then like point six percent in South Korea, and they couldn't figure out why the place that had contact tracing and the place that put all of their old people in really enclosed spaces with each other and the rest of their families uh, were having more people express symptoms. <laughs> okay, are we good this time? Okay, let's try that again. One more time. Here we go. Why well, won't it play now? We need an IT department. We do <laughs> have, we have an IT department is the, is the thing. <laughs> Who are they? They need to be sacked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is locking up on me. We should have tested this before. Okay. I know. Do you want me to I, try? And, th and this is such a super serious show. So, like, right? There definitely wasn't like a coordinated effort to have us wearing matching shirts or anything like that. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Why don't you give it a try? It seems to have worked from you. <laughs> well, uh, I need you to send me the. The videos. I don't have the link. Okay. Um, Immunoglobulin M. This show is going amazingly so far. It's right? going fantastic, mate. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we've, we've debated the blank screen. We've gone 15 minutes in. <laughs> yeah. We haven't. We haven't even done anything substantive yet. Well, you know, I'll, I'll just ask Jordan the question. How about that? Go for okay. it. Jordan, are you pro or anti-lockdown? Uh. Anti for this reason, because within the United States, we have shown definitively mm -hmm. that even when we have the quote unquote quarantines, the uh, attempts to shut down businesses, the attempts to have people remain away from each other, um, the portion of the population that would obey that order anyway is going to do it without a lockdown. The portion of the population that is going to oppose that is going to, out of pure spite, disobey lockdown orders, and the police are not going to stop them because the police are also uh, overwhelmingly not supportive of lockdown measures. Uh, right. if, you, if you look across the United States, like by profession right now, police are one of the lower ends of the spectrum of vaccination rates so 
Uh, Your cops suck. <laughs> they do. They, they, they just want to kill people, they, don't they? They are literally just bad at everything. Yeah, I bet they. Go, I bet they contract COVID and just go around okay, breathing guys. on people. Let's let's try this out. Here we go. You say you have this many cases or this many uh, people who are infected, and the fatality rate is, they say, ten times higher than the flu. Let's just put it at that number. That's right. still a lot of people, and people are comparing it to, you know, you say that uh, this many people die in a year of car crashes, this many people die in a year of cancer, this many people die in a year of, you know, household accidents, whatever. Right. But those are usually like things that are not if they are preventable like there's ways that you can prevent cancer but you're never going to get all of them you're never right, going to be able right, to prevent 100 percent right. of household accidents you can't transmit cancer to somebody else right um driving safely will prevent most auto accidents but at the same time you're never going to bring it down, down to zero right but this is a case of we have the ability to prevent it and it would be irresponsible not to take some measure in order to prevent it. And then we Silence. Didn't. And then yeah, we I was going to say, <laughs> what's going on here? Yeah, no, nobody know what I was you waiting want to for say. something. We're all scared of him because he's a neuroscientist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, the. Uh... So, how would you prevent it? If if not lockdown, what would you do? Well, for the most part. Uh, and the numbers don't currently show this for the most part within the United States, people have actually attempted to take mitigating measures to prevent the spread. Most people, mm -hmm. when I say most, I mean, depending on, the st depending on the state, it's not most people, but nationally it is actually most people. Right. Alabama um, doesn't get a shit. Uh, well, Alabama's <laughs> not even the Alabama's not even the worst. Uh, Florida and Arkansas are currently the worst. Uh, Texas right. is catching up quickly. But by Arkansas right now is so desperate for hospital space that they're airlifting people from Arkansas to Indianapolis because all the hospitals in, in Arkansas are full. Louisiana is sending people to Texas, but Texas's hospitals like near Houston are full. Jordan, right. you clearly uh, haven't read Tom Woods' e-book. <laughs> the, the charts are wrong. I mean, why would I read Tom Woods' ebook? book Because he, like, <laughs> he had pneumonia. <laughs> like, yeah, coincidence, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, like, uh, the best example that I can give right now is that in my hometown, um, they're telling people that if you, like, even if you don't have any of the symptoms of COVID, if you're in a car crash, there is a 48-hour waiting room wait time. Fuck that. Um, Damn because the hospitals are overflowing with people but who, isn't that just what the deep state wants us to think i mean <laughs> what i i love people asking that kind of question because here's the here's the the reasonable end of that question to what end would they do that like what um, that? to oh. uh something about the gay agenda and uh like, I don't know, the, the liberals. Interesting information. Do you know which, uh, like, subgroup of the United States is the most heavily vaccinated right now? The Republicans. Gays. Neuroscientists. Uh, I don't know if they've broken it down by that. Uh, <laughs> they, there is actually a... I believe from the information that was released earlier this week that, like, more than 90% of people who identify as LBGQT have been vaccinated if they are able of able to receive the vaccine. Um, I, I, I don't want to go into like all the information that like may have like led up to that because it's a matter of like, why do different groups make different decisions? And that's not included in that particular survey, but this is purely along ideological lines at this point. Um, like I've seen, the best go-to example that I can see of like how completely this is purely political is that I've seen nurses reject vaccination because they don't trust the liberals to qualify it. Yeah. Well, there was but, those. There was the um, nurses in in the. I think it was the Houston area 
um, that ended up getting fired from their, their job because they weren't going to get vaccinated because it was. It was all strictly political. And that's, that's the kind of signs they fire were holding. They, it was clear it was political. Like, fire them. If you are in the medical field, and you do not understand preventative medicine and you think that a treatment like this is, which by the way, all of the information on how the clinical trials were run have been publicly available since last December. They are available for anyone else to read. If you want to read it, you can, no one does, but it's there. The New England Journal of Medicine is free, everyone. Go, go look them up. The clinical trials are available for everyone to read. If you work in medicine and you don't understand the clinical trials, find a new job. If you work in medicine and you refuse to read the clinical trials because you don't want to, find a new career. But there is absolutely no excuse for anyone who's going to be working around patients and can be vaccinated to not be vaccinated. I'm not saying that like, if you have an autoimmune condition or something like that, you can't work in a hospital, but you get the idea. Like there's, there's no reason to be the viral vector that allows hospital infections to happen. So what about the people in our Twitter uh, followers, or I don't even think they follow us. They probably just pop up on our page that say the vac the vaccine doesn't actually work or the vaccine doesn't actually prevent uh, catching COVID they're demonstrably incorrect. Like, I don't know. What do you want me to say to that, John? <laughs> well, I just wanted you to go, go into <laughs> like, detail about it a little like bit. I know they're trolling me because that's what they do to us on Twitter, but like, no, I don't no. even use Twitter. Like, oh, you, you're missing out. you've actually, you've messaged me at work and be like, hey, Jordan, you got doxxed on Twitter. And I was like, I have a Twitter? Like, what the? <laughs> Someone and, made a Twitter for you. And then doxxed probably Twitter, John. Yeah. <laughs> I've been John's sock account this whole time. No, um, so the way that the vaccination process works, and this is not specific to the COVID vaccine, but the way that the vaccination process works is that you take whatever antigen that you want the immune system to target. You isolate something that's going to create that antigen and then have the body respond to it. In most cases, it's like a viral coat protein from a flu virus or an attenuated live virus or... Uh, in this case, it was one of the, they've been working on this technology for decades, but in this case, it was the piece of RNA that, clo that uh, codes for the spike protein on the um, COVID particle itself. Now, the interesting thing about this is that using an MRA, mRNA protein vaccine means that it is Whereas with some live viruses, you can be exposed to the virus itself and catch the virus with uh, like attenuated viruses or viral coat proteins. It's not possible to catch the virus from the vaccination at all. Um, and so I remember like when the vaccine first came out, people were reporting that like this many people got the vaccine and then immediately got COVID. No, that's not. That's not even physically possible. The vaccine does not even contain the virus. It contains an mRNA in a microchip. That... God damn it, John. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know that you're trolling, but someone yeah, yeah. Is, like listening to this and going like they're on. There's, there's no microchip. Okay. Don't worry, guys. It's also not magnetic. And yes, we're going to get to that. Um... <laughs> I, I will be right back. Yeah, go for it. So. Why is your why is that your photo? <laughs> <laughs> why not? Oh god. So all right. Um, the once it's in your body, your um it will be taken to a ribosome. The ribosome will convert that messenger RNA into the spike protein. The spike protein will be recognized by your immune system and your immune system will generate an antibody effect for that spike protein. So the next time that your body encounters that spike protein, it will have an immune response to it. Uh, it's a two, depending on which one you got, either the Johnson and Johnson or the Pfizer one or whatever. Uh, it has the boost effect of the second time it sees it, the immune response is much higher. So it produces even more of these antibodies. By the time your body sees it the third time, 
your body has enough antibodies built up to immediately neutralize and kill whatever is expressing that protein, which is the COVID virus. Now, the more time that we give the virus to mutate, the more time it may have to change that shape of the spike protein so that the antibodies may not recognize it. But that hasn't happened yet. What's it appearing to happen right now is that the uh, vaccines wane in effectiveness over time, which is why we may be getting boosters, which is the same way that the flu works. I don't see why people are freaking out that hard. You're, you're telling me that's not to turn us all gay? No, we have other things for that. But <laughs> we have you, John. <laughs> so, you turn heads. <laughs> so essentially what we have for all of these is a vaccine that will actually induce a very strong immune response. It's above 90% effective um, given a period of time after the second dose of the shot. It cannot give you covid it does not have a microchip in it, for God's sake. Um, now, the only real question that was remaining after the initial clinical trials was how long does the immunity still last? And is it going to still work on each successive variant that is uh, being allowed to come off of COVID? Now, the problem that's going to be created there is that the more people who are not immune to COVID, the longer it's going to be still be out and about spreading and mutating because it has more place. It has more viral vectors. It has more pools. It has more place. It can just sit and stay mutate and go elsewhere. So we're on to like the big case right now is the Delta variant in the United States because it's everywhere. It's filling up the hospitals. Um, it's causing all the other problems, but the vaccine is still effective at not only just preventing the Delta variant from infecting you, but also reducing symptoms because your immune system is already, even if you become infected to it, your immune system is already primed to fight it. So even if the virus is already on board and taken hold in you, your immune system is more capable of fighting it than it would have been without the vaccine. That's not saying that the vaccines are 100% effective. That doesn't mean that you're bulletproof. But if you look at the hospital comparisons of how many people are in the hospital who are unvaccinated versus how many are in the hospital who are vaccinated. The vast majority are unvaccinated. The vast majority who are dying of it are unvaccinated. The vast majority of people who are carrying it and expressing milder symptoms are vaccinated. So if given the choice between having it and just feeling tired for a few days and having it and ending up on a ventilator, give me the shot every time. But because about 30 to 40% of the population opted to go with the I don't trust it because on the libs, uh, we are now seeing hospitals overrun in most of the areas that initially the outbreak was in the areas that voted for Donald Trump. And now it's everywhere because that virus is spread. So I do, I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to talk through a lot of different things. But I do actually want to like try to address some of the stuff in the comments at some point. If it's Karen, don't read it. <laughs> okay. No, it's the there's people on YouTube that uh, apparently do not like the vaccine. Okay. Um, mom, I don't care. Seems to be a few comments, and they don't really like you either, here. John. No, I know. <laughs> um, Let's see. They love. Did me, you know, know that? 78% of hospitalized patients were obese. Yeah, it's because 78% of America is obese. No, I, overweight. <laughs> or overweight. Yeah, not obese. Yeah, but that, that's but what the it, number was. Yeah, so, okay. So there's I that. Wait, I hate to be the one who breaks it to you that Americans should probably have been exercising for decades before this. <laughs> but it's a little late for that one. Also, that would explain why you would have pre-existing cardiovascular problems why you would have conditions like asthma or diabetes or whatever that does not like, there's no amount of pull-ups that you can do that would imbue antibodies. Like um, there's things that you can do that like prevent your immune system from being impaired, but there's not, not a lot that you can do to give yourself a, an, a memory immune response. There's nothing you can do to prepare your white blood cells and antibodies for an antigen that you've never seen before, except exposing yourself to the virus and rolling the dice on this might kill me, but I might be immune after, or 
vaccination, which has a one in what 500 million of you having a adverse response? So someone in the comment section was talking about natural immunity. Um, does it make, does it make sense to still get the vaccine after you've had COVID? Yes. And here's why, depending on, um, one, you can get COVID more than once. That was already like established before we even got the vaccines because people were getting repeated infections already. Um, two, depending on what your immune system has determined to be the antigen for COVID, um, it can fight that off again. But if that's the part of the uh, virus that has mutated in between variants, then you're basically at square have, one then. Yeah. If you're like, if the, if we have COVID and the original COVID vaccine codes for the spike protein, well, if the spike protein mutates in a way that your antibodies no longer identify that spike protein, then the vaccine is useless because it's targeting something that is not there. That hasn't happened yet. All of the COVID variants are still expressing the spike protein and the vaccine is still relatively effective against all of them. You can look at the percentage rates and it goes up and down depending on how long it's been since you've had the vaccine and which strain it is, but whatever, they're still working. Um, but if you have natural immunity, you should still probably get the vaccine because you don't know what your body has targeted on this molecule or, or, or what molecule on the surface of this uh, virus that you're body has targeted. And let's say that there's a 90% chance that you're immune to COVID on just natural immunity. It costs you literally nothing to boost that to 95% by getting another vaccine. There's no side, like there's no downside to that to get an extra 5%. So, so people are going to respond to that in the comments by saying the vaccine's dangerous. They're, they're not. And that's also fairly easy to demonstrate, but I, that's, I mean, I agree with you. I'm just, I'm just saying. Oh no, it's, I know it's, it's John. I've been doing this for years. I know what's coming. Like, <laughs> I, like they're going to tell me that the vaccine's dangerous, and I'm going to ask them to demonstrate how they're going to pull up the VAERS system, and I'm and going to cite Alex Jones. Yep. And, <laughs> yeah, uh, and Infowars. Yep, and I'll casually point out the case study where a guy submitted that the flu shot turned him into the Incredible Hulk. Uh, and the American government actually published that as if it was happening because they do not fact check the vaccine side effect list. They do, like the published information that's on the VAERS system is not fact checked by literally anyone. They just publish the case reports that are submitted. The majority of those case reports are submitted by personal injury attorneys who are looking to take a bite out of a pharmaceutical company because parents are upset that their kid has a condition that may or may not have already been genetically predetermined to be happening. And it was expressing symptoms after the vaccines happened. And it's easier for the U.S. government and these pharmaceutical companies that are probably a little bit too friendly to each other to just throw money at that problem to get rid of it than addressing it for what it is. They don't fact check anything that's on there. So whenever someone cites like the VAERS system, I go to show me the case, like the case study or the case report or whatever else of how did this vaccine cause this problem? And to a individual, they cannot do this. Now, there are some cases where it turns out that like the vaccine did actually have a problem because... It was a contaminated uh, dose and you had a bad batch. Or it turns out that a doctor should have checked this person for a pre-existing condition like an autoimmune disorder or a severe allergy or whatever. And they had an allergic reaction to, to the shot that they should have been checked for before that they were administered the shot. But that is not a reflection on the shots itself. So someone in the comments asked, let me find it. I know someone who claims the vaccine damaged his girlfriend's liver. How likely is this claim to be true? It's false. Uh, it's probably alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, without knowing whether or not that they have a pre, like if they have like a pre-existing condition, like an allergy or something like that, highly unlikely, like extremely unlikely. 
Um, the half-life for the vaccines in the body is like 36, 38 hours, something like that. So it's out of the body relatively quickly. It breaks when they inject it into muscle tissue, it breaks down fairly quickly and it's out of the body in a few days tops. Um, if the shot did actually damage their liver, it's because they had a pre-existing allergy or autoimmune condition, which when they were exposed to this vaccine, their body went in, their immune system went into overdrive and attacked the cells of the liver. But unless they were injected with something other than this vaccine, I, I, I wouldn't determine it to be very likely, but I don't want to make any like prescriptive statements about that because there are people who have autoimmune disorders or allergies or whatever that should be told by their doctor not to receive vaccines or not to receive specific ones. They're not all the same. They don't have the same ingredients, but it, if if this person is telling the truth, then either they're either they had a pre-existing autoimmunity allergy or whatever, or there was something else going on medically that we're not aware of. But there's been no reported instances that I'm aware of from any of the clinical trials or any of the background data on the vaccines that would indicate that they have any kind of hepatic issue like that. It was not likely. Okay, I, I got another one I want to touch here. What do you make of Israel and Iceland? Where no, the one below, one below this. What do you make of I Israel and Iceland, where vax rates are very high and cases and deaths keep going up? Um, I'm not particularly familiar with the case of Iceland, but I would say that when you're looking at a population and you're seeing an increase in deaths and cases, look at where in the population the cases and deaths are coming from. The United States, by all accounts, we have um, we didn't meet it by July 4th, but we do have uh, for the people who can receive the vaccines, we have like above a 60 or 70 percent case rate. If you're looking at the number of cases that we still have, it's the unvaccinated people, the very old and the very young who can't receive the vaccines yet who are showing up in the hospitals. So it can be that Israel has a, I don't know what their infection rates and death rates are, but if the variant is going through people who are not vaccinated and very old, so even with the vaccination, they, you know, weaker immune systems as you get older or have pre-existing conditions or whatever else, or the very young, that's not necessarily an indication of the vaccines not being effective. Um, if you look at, let's say you have a thousand people and a hundred hospital beds, 90% of people get vaccinated. That's 900 people vaccinated and everyone else gets COVID. And you also have 50 people who were vaccinated to get COVID. Now you have an overflowing hospital where a hundred of them are unvaccinated and now 50 are vaccinated. That doesn't mean that the vaccines weren't effective. It means that the only people who are going to the hospitals for it are unvaccinated or have some other kind of condition that would preclude them from being vaccinated or they have some other kind of illness. Uh, for instance, like if, if someone got the vaccine, but is also going through chemo, your immune system shot, what's going to happen. Um, if you have, you know, a preexisting condition, like an autoimmune disorder that precludes you from getting the vaccines in certain cases, um, that would be a reason that they would be in the hospital with COVID. Um, but from, especially within the United States, what you're seeing is that the unvaccinated people are the majority of the people who are in the hospital for it. And the now, guy I'm who, not, uh, oh, I'm not wait, overwhelmingly I'm familiar, point I'm not one thing familiar out. with Iceland, so I don't want to make any like, I am actually, uh, and okay. they've had one death since February. So <clears throat> in fact, is no, oh, he's, 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 he's gone off, but one, one death since February in Iceland. So apparently that's something to panic about. Yeah. Well, you know, one person. Yeah. They, they so I, I, I don't I don't keep up with like the daily counts of every country in the world because I live in Florida and God help us if we're trying to do that by county here. So <laughs> yeah, I mean you you guys have your infection rate is is bigger than the UK, the whole of the UK. Yeah, we know. Yeah. So Sorry to also, remind you. Yeah, it's uh it's also great that like we we received emails this last week, um, basically telling us that like. Uh, we're expected to be masked and vaccinated, but we're not required to be because if we say the word required in emails, then Ron DeSantis will have a shot in our sleep or something, um, which I joke about, but 
he just declared a state of emergency for a tropical storm when everyone's house in Florida is built to prepare for a tropical storm. But God help you if you try and, you know, prepare for a pandemic. Globe, yeah, global pandemic. Uh, and he's uh, also very nervous about global warming because God help you if you try and propose anything that would be like, hey, we're trying to build this, but we're expecting the sea levels to rise. Well, now you can't build it. Why not? Because global warming is not real. Okay, but <laughs> why is the water getting high all the time? Shh. Oh, is he a climate change denier as well? Oh, he's, he's Trump's successor. So oh, wonderful. We've got another one. Yeah. So, oh no, there's, there's more than one, but he's, he's the one that gets all the praise because he's the one who's the most vocal about owning the libs by refusing to do anything about COVID. So like, it's not authorized that schools can put, have mask mandates or require vaccination. But if you work for the university system, you have to take a survey every year about your political beliefs to make sure that you're not a communist. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm super excited to find out that I'm a communist because I believe in germ theory. I know that that's coming. <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited to I mean, see all of, all of my medical research funding cut because I don't believe in capitalism as I search for jobs in industry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, these guys are insane. They're, 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 everything is communism to them. You know, a bit of bad weather. Oh, that's communism. You know? No, that's God's judgment for the gays. You keep that straight. That's the <laughs> oh, sorry. That, yeah, that's the other one. They're scared of the gays as well. But uh, yeah, no. I, uh, what was the, they? They call things like private companies that, like Facebook, to go. Oh, Facebook's communism. Oh yeah, now. that was a that was a fun. That was a fun bit of. Well, there's also that like they. It's communism that private companies like cruise lines would require vaccines because they don't want to have an outbreak at sea because God forbid that you have you know, however many thousand people on a boat and uh, in the middle of that find out that, you know, there's also a COVID outbreak and you're all stuck on this boat with other people who have COVID. Well, that happened, didn't it? It, it yeah. happened a lot. Yeah. It, like, that's, <laughs> right. Um, it and the Diamond so, and Princess then, or something, I think it was called. Yeah, and so in them trying to deal with that, they uh, essentially had the state of Florida tried to ban cruise ships from checking vaccination status before you board the ship. The cruise lines responded by, we can't check vaccination status, but we can raise the prices on people who refuse to show vaccination cards while suing the state of Florida to do this. So if you were trying they, to go on they, and it got more expensive, it's Ron DeSantis' fault. You could have just gotten your shot and got on the boat, but there you go. Yeah. So, all right, let's, um, let's go to the, um, we don't even have tests video. Oh God. Because we're three, three and a half months into a pandemic. We don't even have the ability to test for it in most places. We have no yeah. idea what the infection rate is because how, how do you tell if you can't test? That did not get better with time, by the way. <laughs> that, that actively had the president telling people to stop testing for it because he was tired of the numbers getting higher. Yeah, that. Uh... So we're also looking at, you know, and, and this is kind of anecdotal, but I, it probably exists in more places where we previously would have like regularly scheduled, like, go get tested if you're going to school workshops down here. Um, those are probably going to, you know, kick back up, but people quit going to them as much when there wasn't as much immediate need to. And, uh, as soon as that all stopped, Delta hit us. And Sorry, so, I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then what other uh, do we have Jeremy. <laughs> what did I miss? Did we get called blue pills in the comments again? Probably. Probably. No, there's, there's um, a guy that keeps saying the... you like straw men, though. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Um, so the next one, um, let's see, care. Yep, care care rationing. Let's let's do that one. Oh, Lord. I don't think we've hit the point in the United States yet where we're right. going, we're, we're not seeing, like, rational rationing of health. Of, beds in hospitals we're seeing that in italy and it's yeah. like they're already trying to come up with like triage plans for 
what to do with this many elderly people in these hospitals. We're not seeing that in the United States yet. Um, so we, ha- I don't think that that is the immediate worry just yet. Okay. The worry right now is still containment. Who can like, if we keep everyone separate for long enough to see who is symptomatic, can we get these tests out so that people can start testing themselves? Can we get everything settled out and just see where is the virus? Can we keep it there and prevent it from going elsewhere? That's the priority right now. Priorities have obviously changed, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. I see that. Um, yeah, we uh, we hit the care rationing point more than once, unfortunately. <laughs> and uh, here's the thing. In March of 2020, that was not the concern. It's absolutely the concern now. And it's going to keep being the concern until we actually hit herd immunity, which we're not going to do. <laughs> so it's just the concern indefinitely. Oh God. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's gonna, here's Well, here's the thing. It's going to keep coming in waves. It's um, it's, it's going to keep coming in waves right now. This is just Delta. Um, but if you remember last winter when it was just regular COVID and we didn't have any kind of testing or we didn't have, we did have testing, but we didn't have a vaccine for it. And we right. said, Whatever you do, do not cluster together with your elderly relatives at Christmas. And immediately (laughs) everyone did that. And we saw what happened last winter. So this is going to keep happening. This is absolutely going to keep happening. Um, And it's not, I, I, I I don't like that they coined the phrase, um, you know, pandemic of the unvaccinated, but it's, if we were only dealing with vaccinated populations, this would not be happening. So it, it would be however many people are in the hospital now who have been vaccinated, that number of people as a percentage would be the only people who are in the hospital for COVID. And it's really unfortunate that this is what's happening, but this is also a direct consequence of having conservatives politicize vaccination. Yeah, actually that goes into the next one. Um, if you want to play the incubation video. And for anyone before I before you do that, for anyone who doesn't realize what these videos are, Jordan went on Spike's show at the start of the pandemic. So this was back in March 2020. So that's why it sounds different now. And he looks different now. <laughs> what what do we know for certain? So you know when this first came out and I looked up, you know, incubation periods and they're like, well, other coronaviruses have an incubation period of up to 14 days. So we're assuming that this is the same and other things last this long, other coronaviruses last this long on certain surfaces. Do we know for certain, for example, how long COVID-19 specifically lives on different types of surfaces, exactly how long the incubation period is, whether high heats can kill it, things like that? Or are we still flying blind and comparing it to like SARS and stuff like that? Uh, We do know, we do know enough about it to say that like disinfectants will kill it. High heat will kill it. Okay. Um, As far as like whether or not antivirals will slow down the progression of symptoms, I'm not sure. Right. Um, like I said, I'm a, I'm a neurophysiologist. I'm not a virologist. I'm not an immunologist. I just, I took regular intro level classes on them, but that's, right. uh, you know, we do know that, uh, compared to the other viruses that are comparable with coronaviruses, it does have, uh, some people have said as low as 14 days incubation. Uh, some people have documented, I believe it's high as 35, <laughs> Uh, so this... so yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you're now realizing what kind of mess we're in, right? Um, you're telling people like, oh, you, you, you came back from at this point anywhere and you're not feeling well. Mm-hmm. You have to stay in your house for 35 days and, and assume that you have that you have. But those are kind of outliers, right? Like my understanding is that the average like, you know, maybe one it's, out of a thousand is going to be outside of that 14 days. But it, but that it is possible. Oh, it's possible, but the thing is that we've um, we're so far behind the curve on this right now um, because we waited so long to do anything about it uh, that we're now looking at, uh, for example, um, right now Florida public schools uh, were on spring break, 
um, they sent out the email a few weeks ago that following spring break, if you leave whatever campus you're on, you cannot come back to that campus for 14 days. So if you leave for spring break, you cannot come back to school for 14 days. Following that 14 day period, you can come back if you've shown no symptoms whatsoever. Which is means nothing. And then they, when they change that to be, we're not having classes anymore this semester. Right. You can come back in the summer, but everything else is going to be online. Um, and that seems a bit much, but if we don't have testing kits and we don't have any way of saying who has it is asymptomatic or who has it and, uh, you know, is contagious or who doesn't have it or whatever. Right. But we're looking at the real possibility that this virus, which was highly contagious, was allowed basically six weeks with no public response to it. It could already be everywhere. I assume like, it is. Yeah. Yeah. We're, and we're at the point now where like, okay, we're, we're in quarantine, but we have no way of knowing whether or not you're sitting in quarantine with other people who are carrying the virus. Right. 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 Yeah. Like for, for the lack of testing kits is like the most egregious error that we could have made here. Um, and until a week ago, the people who were, you know, in charge of the federal government were saying this was a hoax. Actually, I want to touch on that last uh, line you said, because we just <laughs> had a YouTube comment. It says COVID is the fake hoax as fuck. Yeah. Um, is, is COVID a hoax? No, of course not. Oh, wait, did we lose Jordan? <laughs> well, nope. I mean, they, they, they I, cut I, him off. Uh oh. <laughs> the they deep state cut him off because it was going to come out that it was like, he was going to say that it was a hoax. Oh, oh wait, is, is he back? Oh, I'm going your back. Can I ask a question? Why, why uh, I wanna... is Spike called Vice Presidential Jew? He named himself that. We did not put that label on him. Why? <laughs> because he was running as he was running as Vermin's vice presidential nominee at the time. And Where's the Jew part come in? That's just random. Did. Oh, okay. Fair He's enough. Like... Okay, so the person who said that COVID is fake as fuck just said it's literally the flu renamed. Jordan, is COVID the flu renamed? No. It's Influenza and coronaviruses are two entirely different strands, or two entirely different families of virus. And it's is is COVID thing. worse than the flu? Uh, yes, by a lot. <laughs> like that's not a, that's not a question. That's 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 someone who doesn't ever bother to look at something under a microscope. They don't even look alike. All like, strain. Yeah. Well, the I mean, you can you can look at an influenza viral particle and a COVID viral particle and just go, oh, those are not the same. Like that's <laughs> they, they literally got the name coronavirus because it's a little it looks like it's wearing a crown. A corona. It looks like it's wearing a crown. It's a circular particle with a ring around it. That's what it looks I like. I don't think you heard my question. I didn't hear your question. I'm sorry. Are are all strains of COVID worse than all strains of flu? Um, I no, because I would imagine that there's probably strains of coronaviruses. Now when you say COVID. COVID is specifically referring to the... Right, right. SARS-CoV-2 is what I meant. Yeah. So... Is that virus going to be worse than, like, influenza itself? I mean, the Spanish pandemic of 1918 was pretty bad. Right, but that was also... Maybe I'm going with that. Yeah, well, I would not say that every strain... Because uh, there's also... It's important to remember with viruses that not every virus is going to like even necessarily be pathogenic. Um, you'll probably see mutations of uh, COVID or influenza that actually make them less dangerous because viruses aren't specifically evolving to like try and kill us. They just kind of do that by accident. Viruses are just particles that are trying to replicate themselves and survive. Um, they're particles that replicate themselves and survive actually do that better when they don't kill the host. So there's tons of viruses that absolutely exist that are not deadly, are not lethal, are not even causing any kind of disease. Uh, so to say that like every strain of COVID or every strain of coronavirus that came from COVID-19 
is going to specifically be more dangerous than every strain of the flu? Probably not, because there's probably also strains of the flu out there that are not necessarily pathogenic and are not necessarily going to like be identified like as a problem. So we're never going to vaccinate for them. It's never going to cause a symptom. And so we don't even know that it's there. So virology is a wild subject, but it's a lot of fun, but it's also horrifying. Okay. So I want to address three things here. It's totally three, totally different things that are in the comments section right now. Oh boy. <laughs> um, the same guy who said that COVID is a flu renamed said, I'm curious how you know a coronavirus has caused a single illness. I'm saying the illness can be explained by the flu. What? He, the hell is he on about? Know, okay. Do they know what the Coke postulates are? And no, it has nothing to do with the Coke brothers. It's cocaine. <laughs> no, okay. no, no, it's I mean, I, 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 this guy can barely spell, so I don't think he's going to know that. Uh, okay. So coronaviruses are or specifically this one uh the way that you initially do these kind of things is by isolating a the coke postulates are involved from you take an animal that died of x disease you isolate a thing from that animal you put that thing in another animal and see if the new animal gets the same disease because of being dosed with this virus or this particle or whatever it's how you can diagnose or it's how you can use basically anything to identify a d disease that is transmitted from thing to thing. Um, it's either the wildest coincidence ever that millions of people have all been killed by the exact same thing, or whoever is trying to play gotcha with this doesn't understand like elementary school level germ theory he's saying coke postulate was no coke postulate was met by covid19 never isolated and never reinfected a healthy agent yeah that's just not true like, <laughs> okay so that, oh go on yeah that's that's it's just that simple that's not true that it's they've they've already isolated it like it's it's been isolated for more than a year now that's how they made the vaccines <laughs> So another guy said it's based on PCR tests where the cycle threshold is cranked up to 40 plus. Was that Tom? <laughs> Tom, is that you? Was Because you guys have sent me the Tom Woods tweet of people not knowing what a PCR test is. Um, and whoever's writing that in the comment, uh, what does P, C, and R stand for? And what do each one of those cycles do? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Bloody hell. Aim so, away from the microphone, brother. Um, yeah, no, my, my bad. Sorry. I got COVID. <laughs> Does it make you sneeze now? I'm going to put Shit. a mask on now. <laughs> no, I, I accidentally uh, got pepper up my nose. That's why I, I sneezed. All right. So um, PCR tests uh, function by denaturing a genetic material and allowing it to be copied by enzymes that you've supported in the surrounding solutions. Every time you make however many, whatever the size of your sample is, you um, put that within the testing kit. There's a little machine that we had in our laboratory that like it heats up to denature it. The enzymes that are allowed to activate by heat go in, copy that genetic material. It cools back down and the cycle repeats itself. A like saying that it's cranked up to 40 cycles doesn't just mean how many times are you running the hot copy cold overture if they're worried that like pcr tests are being run in a way that like does not accurately copy the genetic information that would be a valid criticism of pcr testing if they are worried that like you've misidentified the uh sequence that was identified using pcr testing that would be a valid criticism of pcr testing but saying that something that normally runs on 38 cycles or 32 cycles or 45 cycles or whatever is someone made a criticism of PCR without knowing what PCRs are. So you can say that it was cranked up to 40, but what is it doing when it cranks up to 40? It's making other copies of genetic material that is there, but it can't copy genetic material that isn't there. If someone's worried that you're faking having a coronavirus, if there's no coronavirus, it can't copy a coronavirus. It's, PCRs are polymerase chain reactions. So if you're worried about someone who is making inaccurate copies of 
DNA or RNA or whatever you're looking for, that would be a valid uh, criticism of PCRs. If you don't know what a PCR is and you think it shouldn't be used as a test, that is not a valid criticism <laughs> of PCR. Okay, so Jacob Winograd asks, I can't cite from memory, but I've seen reports of low vaccination rates among healthcare workers in the U.S. Is that true? And if so, what is the likely reason slash reasons for that? I do want to just point out, I Googled it real quick and found a CDC thing on it. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like among healthcare workers, it's lowest among nurses and aides. So I just want to point that. I just wanted to point that out before you say anything. Oh yeah, the ones that have the lowest degree requirements. Imagine that. Um, well, that's gonna get me fired in ten years. So, all <laughs> yeah. tomorrow. It won't get me fired tomorrow. I don't work with any nurses. But... <laughs> ah, yeah, you, well, not yet. <laughs> um. Right now, it's overwhelming political bias. It's just, it is overwhelmingly political bias. If there's a, it's, that's one of the things that's actually affecting the, the healthcare systems in the South right now is that they're requiring vaccination rates for, um, you, you know, nurses and aides and um, people who work within the hospitals. And people are refusing them based on misunderstanding of like never reading the, the tests. Like, one of the arguments that I've seen people posting from like the Houston hospitals or uh, Macon, Georgia hospitals is that you shouldn't be required to take a vaccine that hasn't been tested. It's been tested for years. I read the tests. I think I pulled up the test results on Spike's last live stream that I went on or that we had available um, or whichever one, but like the test results have already been published. We know what's in it. We know what it does. We don't know how long it's going to be effective and we might need boosters, but I, we know every like there's no question of it being dangerous it's a question of how long does it last before you have to get another one which is the same thing the flu shot does and to be honest with you i would have had vaccine requirement if for a private company previously i would have already had vaccine requirements up much more strictly enforced than they are now because i would have all my employees getting flu shots too but what, i only do this for a living what the hell okay. do I <laughs> so someone so what about someone who says that it's new technology and you can't know the long-term consequences? They're wrong. Uh, like, I don't know what else to tell you about this. Um, it's, if they're worried that it's new technology, the technology has been in development for 20 years. If it's not worried about the, if you're worried about the long-term effects, look at the half-life of the compound itself. It's got a 30 something hour half-life. It is out of your body in a week. The long-term effects are, we don't know how long the antibodies are going to stay active in your body. We don't know how long the memory B cells are going to retain that memory. But if you're worried that like, oh, no, this is going to cause cancer in 30 years, it won't. It's not DNA altering. It's not, you know, any kind of thing like that. This And let's like it's it's not it's you can have figured all of that out from the toxicology reports from anyone who has gotten any of the vaccines so far. We haven't even seen anything that would indicate that there's adverse side effects to anything. Like that was, it was one of the most efficiently and quickly done clinical trials I've ever seen. Um, and there's, there's been a few, like, I think the best example of like how to know that the trials were done well is if you look at the ones that got through and the ones that didn't. Because if they had just let anybody submit whatever they wanted as a vaccine and that without requiring clinical trials and just let it run, that would have been an indication that, that these aren't to be trusted. But there's people who took like the Operation Warp Speed money and didn't even take a product to, to market. market. So these were pretty well done. So you're telling me I won't get a 5G signal after all? If I could get a 5G signal, I would have taken it anyway. But like that would have been. Pretty <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I was going to say, speaking of boosters, you keep sort of like uh, lagging, so you might want to yeah, get a booster I, for your Wi-Fi or something. Right, like if I could get 5G signal, that I could just carry around with me. It would probably improve the podcast. But okay, so Jordan, I know you you support the vaccine, all that stuff. How do you explain this? You're holding your arm at an angle. You rip shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the vaccine stopped working. I need a booster. <laughs> <laughs> you live in Miami and you're just naturally sticky because your air conditioner is turned off. I don't know. My air conditioner is on. Thank you very much. <laughs> Have fun in the hurricane this weekend, Johnny. It's, I don't think it's going to hit. 
but we'll see. Well, I mean, but I don't know what the cone looks like right now. I just know that we're under a state of emergency because Ron DeSantis yeah, is afraid of wind, but not viruses. You guys must live near each other then. Uh, sure. about seven hours Actually, away. like, yeah, we're like really far away, but we're in the same states. You, how big is Florida? Is it like bigger than the UK then? It's a, I, uh, I actually, so. yes. It's by, if you look at the map, we live on like, he lives at the very southern tip of Florida and I live in the panhandle. Yeah. So I live up by like Alabama. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> Sorry to hear that, mate. <laughs> okay, do so we have more clips we want to get to? Um, let's see. The magnet joke wasn't funny weeks ago, said bad person. So, what, you know? It wasn't funny weeks ago, but people believed it weeks ago and then called us on it. So, Well, uh, Josh Smith watched the 47-minute video about people getting the V word for COVID sticking magnets to their arms, and people online are calling it a coordinated scam. Yeah, it's <laughs> like someone spent 47 minutes being a dumbass. <laughs> who, who are these haters? Who who is bought a bod? It's always out? it's always the YouTube commenters too. It's funny, like the Facebook commenters are always like people who like our podcast, and the YouTube commenters are like, I don't know, like maybe Tom uh, Woodson's them here. Yeah, no, <laughs> they, they literally sit there and go, "Oh, this is horrible." But they, it's they Tom sit. Woods. It's Tom watch... Woods with like multiple different browsers open on different yeah. uh, YouTube accounts. Just just thousands of incognito windows. <laughs> just. <laughs> But I, I always oh, find right. it really funny. Like these guys will come on and go, "Well, this is horrible. It's you know, this is bullshit." But they sit there and watch an hour and a half of it anyway. <laughs> so who's the real loser? I yeah, I can't hate watch things, which is also why I don't have a Twitter because I've if, every time you guys send me something from Twitter, I just I read it and it's like, why did I do this to myself? Jordan here like, says, uh, "This is my favorite snake documentary channel." You know, I actually. Um, since I knew we were having problems with the videos, I opened up, I usually read off the Titano Boa Wikipedia page for anyone who doesn't know when we have like a lull in conversation, like if someone freezes or something, oh. but I figured like in case anyone's already read that, I opened up a new article in Titano Boa. So I'm going to have that bookmarked on all our podcasts and I'll have it ready to go. <laughs> all right. Um, let's go ahead and play the, the smart choices, um, regardless of government. Was, was someone going to say something, or I, I can break <laughs> I, the I made have, I might have thrown. No, I may have thrown the, the tech guy for a loop. And here, Anarchy so. Seeds says she says he appreciates chat interaction, and I actually appreciate it too. So wholesome. Okay, moment. so uh, John, while you're reading Titanoboa, uh, we will now look into the dendritic cell maturation in more detail. <laughs> Working together in ways <laughs> that are not yet completely understood. TL. Oh, here we are. Is this the Tom Woody book? <laughs> You know, I tend to think that people would be a lot it, people would be a lot better off if we would just simply realize what we're facing and make smart choices, regardless of what government's telling us. If they're telling us to do this and it happens to be a good idea, then we do it because it was a good idea. If government says do this and it's not a good idea, then we don't do it. If government says you don't have to do this, but we find out it's a good idea, do it. Like do it because it's a good idea. Don't worry about what government's saying. Now, something that Stephen Biggs, one of our one of our, our follower, one of our viewers brought up is, you know, she, he gets the, the the benefits of quarantine, but he's curious, you know, he of our thoughts on the economic impact of this, you know, uh, this reality that we're telling people to stay away from each other and not work uh, during a time that the Fed is cutting reserve requirements uh, to zero so banks don't have to have any 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 uh, money in the bank right at a time when people are having to dip into whatever money they might have in the bank uh, uh, to pay, you know, pay their bills and pay for basic goods and services um, mm -hmm. that is going to lead to a run on the banks. This just kind of underscores yet another reason over and above just avoiding deaths why we need to try to contain this by testing for it the moment we know it's here. Man, I called yeah. that, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was solid. <laughs> Don't have any issues with that. Yeah, we will... So um, we The only redeeming quality of the past year has been how many workplaces have been made aware that like we can work from home, which has been nice. Like... Yep. Um, the places that have been, and I say this as I work in a, a lab, so I have to go into work, but like kind of nice knowing that if you're like an accountant or something, you could absolutely, if you needed to work from home for a day, there's nothing stopping you from being productive there. Right. And yep. I mean, we've, we've moved, we've moved home. I'm probably going to be at home forever. Um, my former employer, um, they moved their entire call center operations at home. 
um, yeah, that's yeah, that's that's one thing that definitely has been positive about <laughs> about this is that you know work at home is definitely much more prominent, and it's proved to not be the uh, you know the the evil thing that a lot of you know especially older generation um, leaders are leaders in organizations tend to tend to play it as yeah now that that doesn't apply equally to all industries though because if you have like if you're if your job is to be a live performance musician uh this has been the end of your field this has not like yeah. been an inconvenience to right. your job this has been like your career might have just completely sputtered out at this point because there's no live performances for a while well there are now, but there's some now. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. they are, they are now, but there's also like, uh, you're going to see some wild variety between the ones that, uh, have safety procedures for COVID and the ones that don't, um, because it's going to go back and forth between like, all right, everyone have your vaccine, their proof of vaccine and your masks and, uh, enjoy the show. And the ones who say, no need to mask you don't need a vaccine and welcome to your super spreader event because that's what this is gonna be like and that's <laughs> can we talk about masks for a second because i want to get some more angry comments are, are masks effective comments yet <laughs> are masks effective at uh preventing spread uh yes depending well if you wear them properly then yes um now if you're doing like hang on um i hate people that do like this number, this this is nothing. I hate people who do this because you're just breathing out of your nose and that's also not helping. I hate people who like constantly take their mask on and off to talk. And then- well, Why do you hate that? Because you, you're talking. You can still- No, I, like, I just did it. I know. <laughs> but you're 700 miles away from me. I don't care what you do right now or wherever the hell is. You're in- uh, I don't want to actually, you know what? I'm not going to say where you live on this show, <laughs> but, um, there's your angry comments. John, Magoo82 Magu says anything. Oh, master a compliance check. And then Magoo82 says anything other than an N95 is just moral support. That's not true. So Here's the point, and I know that libertarians, uh, a lot of libertarians won't get this because it's a decision that you make to help other people and not yourself, and selfishness is not supposed to be a moral imperative, but wow. if you have a mask Massive on... Massive job at libertarians, huh? Have you, have you watched this show? We're libertarians I, who don't like libertarians. Yeah, no, I, don't worry, I'm, I'm aware. <laughs> so... Um, what these are supposed to do, unless you're wearing an N95 or like a stronger form of respiratory protective mask, is that these contain droplets. These keep whatever is coming out of your mouth and nose in a droplet form inside the mask. Now, viruses cannot survive for very long outside of the body, but they do not transmit themselves through air without some kind of vehicle. That's why there's always like whenever there's a delivery of a virus, like in a biological attack or whatever, it's aerosolized. It's put into droplets and spread through the air. These are effective at containing those to a whatever percentage, depending on how many like people double mask, people single mask, people have N95s, people have whatever. This doesn't stop anything from getting in like from either the top or the sides or if you take it off or if you scratch your face or you put your hand in your mouth or whatever you're doing. But it does contain whatever comes out of your mouth while you're talking inside. So if anybody lives in a place where it's cold enough that you can see your breath when you breathe out during the winter, That's those are aerosol keeping... particles. Those are what's coming out of you when you breathe all the time. You just don't see it when it's warm. So inside of each one of those particles are germs, bacteria, viruses, and whatever else is inside your body when you're breathing and talking. So if you're wearing one, it's containing those droplets within you. Now, if it gets in through like the top, the side, you take your mask off, you put your hands in your mouth, whatever, then it's less effective, but it, you play your percentages. You should replace Dr. Fauci. Because <laughs> everyone hates get... him, but everyone will like you. Well, you probably wouldn't have said, oh, don't get masks right away. 
Uh, <laughs> well, and that's the thing is the CDC and, and some of the messaging that the government has, you know, like Spike said, do, you know, if something's a good idea, do it, even if the government says it's not a good idea and you, you I, should I do it. I, I don't like what they did initially and they shouldn't have done it. But I will say this about it. And this is not me defending the decision. This is me saying I understand what they were thinking. I, I do too, yeah. yeah. When the pandemic first happened, people bought toilet paper out from every store for hundreds of miles. Oh, to the don't, point... Don't remind me. Yeah. yeah. To the point that people in, in the school that I work for were going into the buildings that were unlocked and stealing toilet paper out of public bathrooms. Oh, gosh. Because there was no toilet paper left to be found in the city of Tallahassee, Florida. Yep, I remember that. I was having to use, uh, what is it, those little kitchen towels when I went to the toilet. That was really, really uncomfortable. Right. Now, if you had told those same people to buy masks, there would have been none left at all for anyone who was working in a hospital. Which, as it turns out, there weren't any anyway because the federal government seized a significant number of them and were handing them out to federal workers, including ICE agents. So... Uh, you know, we didn't have masks for anybody working in a hospital, but if you worked in one of their concentration camps that were running near the border, you were safe. God. <laughs> uh, so we would have been, and here's the thing, if we had said in December or January and just said, everybody be prepared and Everybody, like, have a stock up of washable masks. Don't get the disposable ones because you're going to waste them. But get the machine washable ones. And just in case something happens, have one ready. Which, by the way, I don't know why that we haven't been using masks during flu season for the last hundred years. Um, because every other... I don't understand why there's such a aversion to wearing a mask during, like... A respiratory pandemic when Asian countries have been doing it for decades. I don't I don't get what Americans think the problem is here, but I also understand that Americans don't understand germ theory. So this is just kind of where we are with it. <laughs> Do we have any other questions? I always found it funny too with, with libertarians like trying to refuse to wear masks. Like you 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 don't want to cover up your face, like <laughs> Oh, no, I like, demand that facial recognition software catalog me for the government. Right. Maybe the anti-mask people are actually the deep state. <laughs> I, I mean, here's, here's the real, like, there have been so many demonstrated cases of, like, Russian troll farms spreading anti-vaccine and anti-mask propaganda in the United States specifically to, like... To fuck with you. Yeah, to cause it to <laughs> yeah. get worse. And every time one of those stories comes out, it gets no traction whatsoever among... Why, why is it always the Russians? You know, in today's world, if you see something bad in the news, somehow it's, it goes back to Moscow. No, see, here's the thing. In the why United is that? States, that's, that's not necessarily true. In the United States, it's become a very partisan issue where the liberals will blame, will blame Russia and the conservatives will blame either China or the deep state or yeah, both. yeah or Twitter, or Zuckerberg, or Obama still somehow, yeah. or the reanimated corpse of JFK. I don't know. Or if you're but, Ryan Dawson, you know who you blame. Well, <laughs> right, but like it, specifically, conservatives have decided that for however many for the last few years, like since the liberals decided that, you know, the Russians interfering in the 2016 and 2020 elections, they've decided that Russia is, has never been a problem. The Cold War definitely never happened. None of that was true. What happened? It was all just liberal conspiracy theories, like everything involving Ukraine ever was. Right, right, <laughs> yeah. Well, I see they've got a new conspiracy guy now, this My Pillow guy. <laughs> have, you, have, you, oh, have you seen him? Yeah. He's giving yeah. tips on cybersecurity because you know if you if you, <laughs> if you if you need tips on cybersecurity, you go to you know your bedding store and ask. You know, <laughs> well, and I went to bed bath and beyond today to fix head. my computer. <laughs> what, what's that? Sorry, and his, I said I went to bed bath and beyond today to fix my computer. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, th this guy, clearly, if you're having a struggling to have a good night's sleep, he's your man, but I'm not really, 
He's not really the one you want to go to when it comes to malware and stuff like that, is he? <laughs> See, you say well, his head like, secu- like our country did not actually pick the reality TV show real estate agent guy to be the head of the military. <laughs> and that's a real thing that happened. That did. Yeah. Your country is strange. <laughs> it is. Well, and and his Lindell's like head security guy or something just basically admitted the other day too that it was all you know pretty much nothing all his data was nothing it it proves nothing um it was all hexadecimal voter lists and just it was all such crap i i really think he's getting boomer scammed i think people are just giving him stuff saying that's what it is and and he's just think he believes his bullshit I think he does. I th- I think he does, and people are taking advantage of that. And he is cutting checks for a Nigerian bunk prince. data, yeah. and yeah, and just saying, "Yep, this is the voter fraud." And then you know it can't be proven. He can't explain it because he doesn't understand what he's looking at either. So that's I I think that is really what's happening with Lindell. Um, let's see. Let's do one more video. Um, do you think there's a Nigerian prince out there who actually does want to give 10 million to someone? He's just sort of sitting there going, I'll keep asking, but nobody wants to take the money. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it's possible, I suppose. <laughs> um, let's do the um, economic impact um, video here. And, and then another question from the, this, the same person, which this is a misconception that we need to clear up. Uh, so we are still under a hundred. She said cases, but I think she means death confirmed deaths and the actions being taken are not fast enough yet. Thousands died with past pandemics and zero was done. The economy went on and nothing shut down. Why is that? I- explain. That's not, that's not true. Um, yep. thank you. The, okay. the, the simple way of explaining that is that, uh, this used to be, I mean, if you look at, let's say the Spanish flu, um, or anything else or just, any other past pandemic that had a, mortality rate that was above like the regular like the annual flu, flu that we rate, have now right, right um th- there was regular economic setback associated with losing this many people every year yeah. with um you know the fact that you're losing this many children out of elementary schools every year that that are not economic oh they didn't shut down you know name a business that's currently shut down uh, they didn't shut it down when we had the Spanish flu, or they didn't right. shut it down when we had polio, or they didn't shut it down when we had whatever else. Um, the economy went on as normal, um, and a lot of people died. It's just that we don't look back on those pandemics as, oh, this caused the Great Depression. It's like, no, people were just ac- accustomed to you know, high infant mortality rates or high childhood mortality rates, uh, a lower life expectancy and a lower standard of living overall. It right. wasn't that there was this giant setbacks that never happened before. Um, yeah, no, it was it was a like, people who were used to losing one out of every five children that was born. So, you know, if another one out of five children died after that, they were more adjusted to that. We're not used to that level of death and mayhem is just a regular thing. Also, something I need to add to this, if you look at a 2% death rate, which in Italy is much higher because of the strain that they have on their hospital system. If 2% of Americans died, that's seven mil- That's almost 7 million people. If 10% of them died, that's 32 million people. 12,000 people died of H1N1. Around 60,000 people die of the flu. We are talking several, not just several times, but adding extra. When when we say orders of magnitude, that's how many zeros you add to the end. We're talking several more zeros added to the end of the sheer number of people dying. And that's before you factor in. If 20% of Americans require emergency respiratory care in a hospital when maybe one out of 10,000 could get it at the same time without putting a strain on the system, this gives you an idea of the kind of apocalyptic scenario that you know people are trying to avoid, which the government imposed upon us. But the idea that this is some kind of overreaction is the exact opposite. We are underreacting to what this is. Called it. <laughs> and... And two, I want to say, Spike said, you know, if two percent of people in the U.S. die, that's seven million. That's actually se- like closer to seventy million. Point um, oh two would be <laughs> would be the the seven million. Uh, wait, hold up. 
0.02 would be 7 million out of 330 million people? Or not 0.02, 0.2. .2. Sorry. I was going to say, like, there's, there's some zeros. I think his math was right. Wait, time out here for a second. We're going to do three. some math. No. Get out the calculator, boys. So, <laughs> and he estimated correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was right. Rounded up. Oh, yep, I can't do math. My bad. He rounded up. Yeah. Yep, nope, but, I can't do math. Point of all that being that, like, as when people said that the I initial, like, mortality rates that everybody goes back to saying that, like, one point whatever million people might die of this, um, the CDC estimate, uh, in, re released initial estimates saying that if no measures whatsoever are taken, uh, more than a million people will die within a year. Measures were taken, um, to varying levels of adherence to suggestions from medical experts, and we lost what was it like 600,000? 500 within a, 600, within a year over 600. Yeah, Just well, in it's, the US. It's, yeah, it's been over 600 here, but I, I'm also giving it like that was in March of last year, so I'm saying March of this year, but still, we've had however many more we've had since March of this year, so above 500,000. Um, we could have had that number much lower than what it was. Had people taken it seriously, but we kind of, because the issue was politicized, had a lot of people who not only refused to take it seriously, but like, I'm going to own the libs by licking this doorknob and then end up in a ventilator. And then here we go. And it's that's a weird way to own the libs, isn't it? Getting sick and dying. <laughs> I shouldn't have to wash my hands after, after pooping. God. You have an immune system. You should just yeah. smear it on your face. <laughs> so, like, this is... I mean, it... Uh, the current situation that we're in right now is absolutely entirely avoidable. Um, we just didn't avoid it. And for once in my life, I, I can't just blame the government for it. <laughs> <laughs> because a certain percentage of this is absolutely coming from refusing to listen to any good advice, specifically because a government source co-signed the good advice that came from private sources. Like, so how do you counteract that? How do you solve the problem? Because you've, you've got a, a separate problem now, right? So loads of yeah, people aren't listening to the advice. You know, they're not uh, going out getting vaccines. So what's the solution? Yeah, we do have... We have a couple of things that we have to do off the top. One, we have to completely change the marketing strategy that's been coming out of the CDC, the NIH, and the federal government because it, at this point, the reason that I hate the phrase pandemic of the unvaccinated is because when the people who were like didn't want to be vaccinated before that, when they hear a phrase like that, they're going to absolutely say like, oh, well, they're coming out, they're out to get us now. Or what, like, even Rand Paul seems to think that the federal government is... Yeah, but seeding, just yeah. don't talk shit about the cops to Rand Paul. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's, I mean, this is where we're at with it. It's it's become such a politicized issue that, like, even people like... Like, the Trump family was one of the first people to be vaccinated. But, like, Trump supporters are still somehow thinking that, like, they simultaneously think that it's, it's to his credit that we have a vaccine... But won't it. take the vaccine because it's a liberal conspiracy. So it's, it's Q a wild, said he didn't have it. Q yeah, said, it's a, yeah, it's a wild back and forth. What we have to do is actually address why people don't want to get it. Um, if they Which don't think it, misinformation. Yeah. Well. Yeah. It's not. It's not just misinformation. Because and and there's been I because I have to attend the department meetings at a medical school. I have to see some of this. Um, the number one set thing that they said was a threat above misinformation because misinformation was number two. The number one threat was the inability to accurately assess threats. They seriously believe that the vaccine is more dangerous than not receiving the vaccine. I'm waiting for the comment section to just explode now. I'll bring it. I'm, I'm here for it. <laughs> I have carved out a career of this. Um, I have like my the fun thing is going to be when I apply for some kind of grant in like 10 years and someone pulls up this podcast and be like, oh, he's never getting funding ever again. Uh. 
Just, I'm just gonna... any any bad comments, just blame me. That's okay. <laughs> just blame me. All right. Um, let's go ahead and let's play. Let's play eighteen months. Yes. Well, before we do that, I just want to go ahead oh. and get this last bit out. Um, the number one thing we have to do is inform people exactly how the vaccines were made, how they are safe, and how we can demonstrate that they are safe. Because we need to give them the idea that it's um like a much greater risk to be unvaccinated than to be vaccinated. And that has to come from some kind of source that these people are actually going to trust instead of one that they see as the enemy. Right, so, so I already Fox know that, CNN. Okay, so we chalk those off. Right. So like no no matter what, like if they're watching this show and they're not vaccinated, they either can't be like they either can't be vaccinated because they have a pre We can do it on the show. Can... There we go. Yeah. Everyone trusts us. <laughs> Here's the thing: If they're watching this show, they're already they're either already vaccinated or they're hate watching me, which I'm fine. <laughs> okay. There's well, nothing that I yeah, can you, possibly say you, that is going to convince people who are hate watching this show to go get vaccinated. I'm so you're telling me we have to convince the my pillow guy? Yeah, that's going to be tough. That's that that's going to be the marketing plan. Yeah, probably. Yeah, but it realistically, it would have to be a source that these people do actually trust. My pillow guy. Them just. Well, yeah. <laughs> here's the thing: it, it could come down to like talk. If you have a like, everybody always talks about like they had that one uncle or that one cousin or that one aunt who's just like super into not being vaccinated or whatever. Um, my entire family is like that. Um, but my grandmother got breast cancer last November. She's fine now, but she had to go through chemo. Um. Wait, a guy in the comments, John, that is a pathetic straw man. No one brought up my pillow but you. With, I brought you up with my pillow. Caps. I brought up my pillow first. But no no jokes allowed here. Yeah, I don't no, think he knows yeah. what a straw man is, but he, he, he's, but, you, he's said straw man like 40 times. He just keeps saying, John, that's a straw man. John I think just, another guy said that too. John yeah. came back and went, I, I was on a phone call, sorry, he goes, That's a straw man. Yeah, here here's a the a really cool way of finding out that anyone is a solid Molyneux parrot is if they use the word straw man too much or use the word sophistry because he's the only person I've ever seen use those words so reflexively no matter what you're saying if he dislikes it. Not and an argument. He, yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Not an argument. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm putting up Landell I'm, as the man to attack because it's funny. I'm going to push on that because I use both of those terms and I do not in any way like Molyneux. Just Fair FYI. Enough, What's like... your take on eggs, Archie? <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's that's the John, real tell. John, What's your take on eggs? We do a whole episode on that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So for the YouTube comments, sake... guy, I was not actually implying that anyone who has questions about the Vax is a Lindell fan. The My Pillow guy came up earlier, and I was making a joke about the My Pillow guy. Yeah, I'm sure there's some there. people that don't like the my pillow guy. Like they like, I don't know Tom Woods, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Someone equally as bad, but you know, uh, Marjorie Taylor Green, Grand Paul, Marjorie Taylor yeah. Green, Jeffrey Ron, Tucker. Oh God, now he's reeing at me. Ron DeSantis. Yeah. Ron DeSantis. Yeah. There we go. Greg Thomas Abbott. Massey. Greg Abbott would be. A, Greg yeah. Abbott. Yep. So if it's. We need to do better about just like person to person communication, not even necessarily something that's going to be coming from a like a media source or a government source. We probably need to do better on like person to person communication on like if there is someone who is actually questioning whether or not they're going to get the vaccine, presenting them with accurate information about it in a way that they will understand it is more effective than like trying to argue that, you know, X, Y and Z sources say that you should get it which is actually why like in hilda you're probably going to find this funny but the reason that i keep my immunology textbooks and actually like reread them is because there's really good diagrams in there for showing people like this is oh, how i love i love a picture book right like <laughs> a lot of a really people do series of diagrams on like this is how antibody production work this is right. what your red yeah. blood cells and more. No, it's, it's, it's something you can go back to, right? And you can read over yeah. it and, you know, refresh your mind. I'm, I'm all for that. Yeah. But I guess my, my question, next question would be, you said before that the Russians and whatnot were spreading all this disinformation to make people not want the vaccine. So 
you're saying that we need to give better communication and or be better with communicating with people to tell them how vaccines are made and what they're like and they don't kill you and they don't turn you into a green monster or anything like that. But how how do you counteract the misinformation? Because that's your big, your big problem. Well, there's so I mean, much shit out there and it yeah. just floods the, the internet. And I don't know, you, you've got to yeah. try well, and there, stop that. There's an unfortunate reality of this is that one of the things that people have said for years about anti-vaxxers um, is that vaccines are a victim of their own success. And this was before COVID in that vaccines were so effective at removing so many common diseases from the population that people have forgotten how bad these diseases actually were. The natural like oscillation effect of this will be when you have high vaccination rates, you will have low disease rates. And then the vaccine rates will drop. You'll have high disease rates again. Everyone will realize their mistake and vaccine rates will go back up. Well, we're seeing that idea play out. Um, the problem is that from their deathbed, people are screaming on the libs. Um, so there was a, a case that came up in Arkansas where a doctor was reporting to the health department and to like the local media that the families of people who had died on ventilators were begging him not to put COVID on the death certificates because, wow. because even after people had died of COVID, people did not want to admit that it was COVID that killed them. Um, that's, that's some deep seated something. I don't know. Right. <laughs> We've unfortunately hit a point in our country where, your desire to own the libs has surpassed your survival instincts. Okay, this and this Magoo eighty two guy. Sorry for cutting you off, but this Magoo eighty two guy says we haven't answered any of the questions he's mentioned, and but he could potentially be swayed. So okay. I might have missed it earlier, but Magoo, if you'd like to, while we're yeah, talking, if you'd like to post any yeah. questions, we will. Yeah, we'll, we'll do. Address. Let's do this. Um, let's go ahead and let's um, play the last couple of videos here, and then. Um, and then let's let's just do some some questions since Jordan is an excellent uh, resource of, of brains. So let's go ahead and let's do the eighteen months video, and then um, and then how many more we got to? Just the just the two. We can play them back to back. Okay, and they're quick. Well, we underreacted already. Right. I don't know that. Uh, for instance, they're saying that we may be on. Uh, under this kind of quarantine for 18 months. That is an overreaction. That is, right. it is entirely too early to speculate about something that's going to last yeah, that would be yeah. months based on this. Right. Yeah. yeah. I've seen that number thrown around. That is a that is a nonsense number. If yeah. we're still doing this in 18 months, that is ridiculous, and that's of a course. different kind of failure. Well. All right. So we're different kinds of There was definitely a different kind um, of failure. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. We... Here's the thing, if if we had just, if we had actually as a country, and I'm talking about as a, as a government, because say whatever you want about the federal government, but like the government has from Trump to Biden done a, a pretty firm 180 on what they have been telling people should be encouraged and what shouldn't be encouraged. Trump was tweeting at people to like protest Michigan requiring masks or whatever, which the state shouldn't have been requiring masks, but also you should still be wearing them, not storming the Capitol building to yell at people because you're upset that you have to wear a mask in Walmart. But yeah. oh, we have but, we have a we have oh, finish what you're saying, but we have a question. For, the question from Magoo82 in the comments. Okay. Let's yeah, do so, let's do the it, video and then we'll do questions. Okay, I was gonna kinda... say the, the, if if we had appropriately reacted we would have been just socially distancing, wearing masks, um, minimizing our contact with people in public, um, you know, keeping people who are at most risk, like young children and the elderly, um, you know, not, I don't want to say like in lockdown, but like you don't, if you have your grandmother in chemo, have her groceries delivered. Because that's what we did. Like, it's not hard. It's just, you know, instead of having your grandmother whose immune system is shot to hell walking around a grocery store, drop her stuff off at the house for her. Like, it's 
little things, not necessarily like apocalyptic things. Um, if your job was in, you know, an industry that would allow you to work from home, good for you. If your job was in an industry that does not allow you to work from home, I'm terribly sorry. We should have planned for this better. Um, but there's a reason that like there's been funds available for that. Like there's been you, I mean, I've given my friends, you know, I've loaned out money. Like it's not, you, you have social support networks for this. This is why you have friends and family and other people that, you know, you have positive interactions with in case you need help. People will help you. We're here for you. The problem is that if you don't do that, the people who are here for you are the federal government. And they are much less efficient at taking care of you than people who are actually emotionally invested in your continued survival. So hooray that the government gave us, what was it, like 2400 bucks over the course of two years now? <laughs> like, hooray, we've received our own tax money back in exchange for them allowing COVID into the country to kill 600,000 of us and, and hospitalize however many more. Like, that's not a great trade-off. So it's, and then when the vaccines came out, I understand that like, I'm still mad that John got his before me. Like, however many, it's been like six months. I'm still pissed that you got yours before me. Because <laughs> he, just trying, he, before just you trolls you, he just trolls you all the time, doesn't he? No, he, here's why, no. He, he even trolls you with vaccines, gets it first. And, this you know, is why he it got in. his before me. Because oh, yeah, this was the best. Yeah. Uh, I'll John, tell the story. Go, go I'll tell for the story. So there was a hospital, like uh, a county over from me, and they expanded the conditions that were necessary to get the vaccine early before like the general population. And one of them was a BMI of 25 or greater, which is considered overweight. And I just barely hit it. <laughs> so I got it. I got it. Cause I'm fat or something. Yeah. yeah. So because John was bulking at that particular time, <laughs> Because he was, he, just went, he went, he went down to Burger King and just smashed a load of waffles, <laughs> and then quickly went, went down and went, am I, am I fat enough? And they went, yeah, you're all good. Here's yeah, a shot. So, yeah. So because John, uh, I don't know what percent body fat you are. It's probably not super high though. But because John is a an, an exercise, you know, he's he lifts That's weights, crazy. so he's heavy, so he qualifies as overweight in the United States, even though his percent body fat would not deem him to be. The dude risk. is ripped. <laughs> I, I imagine when he went to the hospital and they're like, well, you know, what's the reason that you're here? Oh, I'm overweight. And he's got a massive tank top with these bigger big biceps. Hanging <laughs> I was out. wearing a tank top. His, too. His, 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 his six pack can be seen through the, you know, through the shirt and everything. And, but yeah, he's overweight. The nurse tells him to roll his sleeve up. He just slaps the nurse. <laughs> all I, right I, go I'm ahead and play he managed to get a needle into his arm to be fair play this last yeah, video, this last video. We'll, we'll answer these questions here yep it's really one of the interesting questions in the next few years is going to be like how this affects people's opinions of healthcare. yeah because it, this is people are finally getting to see like this is what happens when you let something let this kind of virus go unchecked yep uh, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not it, you know, inspires people to look into actual medical sources about vaccination and read them thoroughly, or whether or not it turns people more hardcore into all of this is a government conspiracy because we got quarantined for three months and I didn't even cough one time. Right. And it's going to be interesting to see those two things play out. Yeah. I mean, listen, honestly, the whole time you're talking, I'm just thinking this is the chemtrails talking. And I'm very sad. I'm very sad for you. I'm extremely sad for you. You know, it's sad that at such a young age, you've already uh, your your frogs are already gay. <laughs> All right. So let's move into the. Do we want to move straight into the questions here, or do we have anything we want to say on that? Can I just write my suicide note live on this screen? <laughs> <laughs> oh. well, yeah. We okay. Definitely... So, I'll go on. Well, we kind of talked, we talked about it. How do we get past that misinformation? And, you know, cause that's where we're at right now. But um, yeah, it's, yeah it's, you, it's, you definitely predicted one of the, there's going to be one of two things that are going to happen. And, uh, and one of them happened. One of them yeah. happened. Both okay, of them so. happens, I think. Yeah. Depending on who you are. Yeah. I was going to say well, it's, we, we've seen, I, I mean, it's, it's purely a political issue at this point, but we've seen that, um, 
the liberals were more likely to get vaccinated and because they were more likely to get vaccinated, um, their conservatives were less likely to get vaccinated. And the fact that liberals have been kind of shitting on Republicans for not getting vaccinated for this long. And I'm not saying that's all Republicans and all liberals, because I, I it's there's absolutely yeah. still going to be like that one super far left hippie liberal who refuses to like get vaccinated because they think that like kale and reiki will prevent them from getting coronaviruses yeah or, well, I, know, I know a couple yeah i mean burn, I, I know, that, burn some I know sage. That, yeah i like i i know that that's a thing but like that is now less and i even said this in the original interview with spike is that there's like the it, previously it was the far left and the far right and the far left being that like um they think that some either corporate conspiracy by Pfizer is, you know, going to be why they should never get vaccinated ever or why they should never take any medication ever. And so you'll have like the couple from Canada that tried to treat their kid with meningitis by giving him like raw onions and maple syrup. I'm, I'm not making that up. Um, versus like before the pandemic, you had like the far right conservatives that were like, there's ground up aborted babies and vaccines. And I refuse to get any of them because it's the mark of the beast. And so We've gone from like those were two relatively extreme. I'm still laughing like, about the Canadians trying to treat it with maple syrup. Though, I, <laughs> John, I wish I was making that up, but like three kids died. Um, that's so. That's so Canada, though. Right. Like, <laughs> they, they, did they have them play hockey after? God, uh, they they <laughs> ride a moose to they, school and stuff. Uh, they actually just made them watch Letterkenny until they died. Um, <laughs> oh wow! But it went from being like two uncomfortably large, but like workable populations of people who are avoiding vaccines to like 30 something percent of the American population within a 12 month period now no longer trust vaccinations and are overwhelmingly being hit really hard by this virus. And like, I don't, I don't want to demonize that percentage of the population one, because like they're, they're misguided, but they're human. But at the same time, like, this is a choice that you've made. I can't, like, revert the laws of biochemistry to make it okay that you've made this mistake, but I got to call it a mistake. Right. Um, but at the same time, you can't let that kind of misinform misinformation propagate or this will happen. Um, and this is one of the unfortunate consequences of making science a political issue. Because now, regardless of what scientific information is present, people are not making decisions based on scientific information. And here we are. Question and you also right. said, uh, I have one question. You also said, I think that people would lose faith in the healthcare system. That was one, one of the options. Is it, have I got that right? What was the two options? One was the, the, government yeah, conspiracy. The, yeah, the, the two options were either people are going to use us as a, a reason to get more into actually reading medical information from medical sources and stuff and stop okay. taking and stop taking their news or about medicine from whatever they see on Facebook or Twitter or the TV. News or yeah. God oh my this has been 30 years of that though. Like this <laughs> but but uh, the flip side of that was are they going to go more in depth into you know conspiracy theory misinformation and unfortunately, we saw that go really hard in one direction. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And I've got one last really important question. How is it that your healthcare system says that John Hudak is fat? How does that happen? Uh, honestly, because yeah. they go by body mass index and not percentage body composition. I yeah. Yeah, sure, that surely you look at him and then you know he's got a flat stomach and you think, okay, he's not obese. Uh, you would think that, but you would be surprised at like what the actual like regulations involving healthcare in this country involve. Uh, like professional athletes can be registered as morbidly obese. Yeah. Because of, what? Like, yeah. It, it, <laughs> yeah, like football players, like yeah, so linebackers or something, or yeah, so you don't even have to be a lineman. Yeah, if you're a football player and you're like six foot six, three hundred pounds, but you're like nine percent body fat <laughs> which is like the dude's giant and just ripped to shreds like aaron because, donald on the rams yeah but because the only thing that they measure are um height and weight they don't count what percentage is fat and what percentage is muscle so if you're just tall and ripped you're technically 
obese. Now, when you get into like, you go to an actual doctor instead of like an insurance company who's like qualifying all of this to see how much your rates are going to cost, which is why rates cost an absurd amount for stupid reason. But when you go to an actual doctor, they give you like the water submersion test or body fat composition with the calipers or whatever. And they tell you, okay, this is how this information is actually useful. But for simple things, it's not. Okay. So let's get, let's get on to these questions here. Yeah. Go for it. Okay. So here's the first one I wanted to touch on. Why aren't, why I'm saying, I think he's saying, why isn't there a big push for studies regarding alternative treatments? For example, ivermectin, Regeneron, and hydroxychloroquine. Why does the conversation seem to be shot and nothing else? Uh, because I have i don't know about Regeneron. Um, I would need to look that one up. I, the only thing I know about Regeneron is that Rand Paul bought stock in it. Um, and then His wife. His wife, yeah. yeah. It's the same fucking thing. And yes. we all know <laughs> um, the studies on ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine have already been done. They don't do anything. Like that's... Uh, I can actually... If you want me to look up those studies, uh, whoever you are, contact me or John or whatever through the face through the Facebook pages or the YouTube page. Like, contact us. I have those studies. I don't remember who wrote them, but the studies have already been done. Hydroxychloroquine did not separate itself from placebo in clinical trials for treating COVID. Neither did ivermectin. Um, the, the, if you go to uh, Google Scholar and look into those information, you can find these studies yourself. They're available for free online. If you can't find them for free online, me or John or somebody else who has access code to, from a university to get the studies that are behind paywalls, we'll send those to you for free. But those are available already. Um, there's also that even within the studies that were already done, hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin uh, are not preventative treatments. The vaccine is a preventative treatment. It will keep you from getting the virus. It will keep you from, if you do get the virus, it will keep you from getting as badly sick. In most cases, it's 90 something percent effective, depending on how long ago you had the shot, but you get the idea. Um, I, I don't know, like the day by day breakdown of like, at what point does it go from 95 to 93 on exactly the 47th day after vaccination, but you get the point. Um, but ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine were only ever proposed to be good at mitigating the symptoms of people who were in hospital settings already, and they did not separate themselves from placebo there. Uh, if people are saying to take hydroxychloroquine or ivermectin or Regeneron or whatever other thing that has come out of like right-wing think tanks as like, this should be used. Um, hydroxychloroquine was literally just something that Donald Trump said in passing. <laughs> um, and for whatever reason, a year later, I'm having to hear about like why this should be given in hospitals instead of vaccines. Um, uh, so ivermectin, yeah, ivermectin is something similar. I don't know who was actually the first person to say that this should be tested for a f effective treatment. And there has been like different things that have actually been tested in your, in hospitals in either Europe, the United States, South America, Asia, where they said, we have this other thing that is good at treating, let's say, uh, inflammation or this other kind of, uh, you know, respiratory treatment or whatever. Um, so yeah, if we, but there's also been that like the original thing that they said was going to be a treatment was uh, azithromycin, which is an antibiotic. And I don't know whose idea it was to treat a viral infection with an antibiotic. I have some questions about <laughs> originally thought that that was a good idea, but nature actually published a paper. I think it was nature. I can go back and double check the sources. Um, John, whoever's in the comment section actually wants to know this, tell them to either email me. Uh, if anybody wants my email address, it's on Jack Lloyd's Twitter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you can contact me however you want, but it's, um, various studies have already been published on the effectiveness of these, all these treatments. Um, the best we can do once you get to the point where you're symptomatic is try and treat the symptoms. The reason that they're pushing the vaccine as hard as they are is because the vaccine prevents the symptoms. So that's the short answer. Okay, so another question from this guy. What are the people who cannot get the vaccine based on a doctor's recommendation supposed to do? Um, that would probably involve talking to everyone who comes in contact with you on a regular basis, like your family, your coworkers, or whatever, and asking them to get vaccinated. Um, and doing as best you can to socially distance in public. If you go out in public a lot, 
Um, I know, for instance, like my when my grandmother, um, I had a niece that was born recently and I had my grandmother who went through chemo recently. My grandmother, after when she was going through chemo, she went from her house to chemo and back. And then everything else that she needed to do, we did for her without getting too close to her because we didn't accidentally be the person who coughed on her and killed grandma. But my little brother who had, uh, he and his wife just had a baby recently. If you're going anywhere near the baby, you're masking up and getting vaccinated because that we're not trying to like get the kid sick. Um, if you're, if you are immunocompromised and you have to go out in public, um, I would still advise socially distancing. If you're going to your workplace, I would ask everyone else there if they have been vaccinated. No, it doesn't violate HIPPO to do that. <laughs> HIPPO. Uh, no, I know what I said, John. I'm allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, before the pandemic started, when I was working at Mercy University, um, we had a student who had um, multiple sclerosis and we had a student who had Sjogren's syndrome and uh, fibromyalgia. For from conversations between them and their doctors, they were advised not to get flu vaccines. And so everyone else in the class made sure they got their flu vaccines so that they could not transmit it to these people. Part of why this is really throwing so many people for a loop in, I, I guess, libertarian circles in particular, but for really the entire United States is that it involves this much concern for like social interaction and worrying about other people. And I guess that's not a thing that people have been worried about before. But at this point, we have a sitting member of Congress saying that it's not a problem that hospitals are overflowing because everybody's got to die of something. What? So, Who said that? Uh, Marjorie, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Oh, of, of course. course yeah, the, the fucking yeah. nutbag. Yeah. She's, did she say something like there's lasers in space? Uh, yes, that was her. Something like a Jewish laser. It was, yeah, it was Jewish space lasers. Yeah, oh, man, that's, that's so, that woman is batty for sure. Yeah, she's from Georgia, which is where I'm from. Um, <laughs> so that's yeah. My uh, by the way, my alma mater is very proud of the fact that uh, Nancy Grace is from there. So if you ever want to compare <laughs> what schools are like in Georgia, that's our pride and joy. Um, <laughs> so yeah, if if you're worried that you cannot get the vaccine, then you need to uh, you can't be expected to stay inside forever. I'm not going to say that like you have to live in a bubble for the rest of your life. No, but you probably do need to make some risk assessment decisions about the people around you when you do this and how often you go to places that are super crowded. So like if you have an autoimmune condition that prevents you from being vaccinated, don't go to Lollapalooza or whatever it was in Chicago that had that many people in one space. Don't go to like, you know, it's just things like that. Um, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't ever go to those things or that you can't go or whatever, but there's reasonable precautions that you can take. And it's not a matter of like, um, whether or not, you know, this is your life forever. It's just a matter of whether or not you can wait it out until the U S hits herd immunity. And there's no more viral vectors that can reach to you or at least minimize the number. But like, I mean, spike has MS spike has been traveling the country for, however, like a year or more now is for part of the election. Um, he mm -hmm. spoke with his doctor about it. They said to wait on it because they don't know how it's going to affect his condition. I, I absolutely am not going to tell Spike to get vaccinated because he's already spoken to his doctor about this. That's their call. I'm not going to. But like Spike is usually pretty good about washing his hands. Spike is trying to socially distance as much as he can. Spike is, you know, telling people to, you know, it's a probably a good idea if other people get vaccinated, but Spike is not going to make those decisions for you. So have at it. All right. And then there is, let's see, should grandparents, please elderly. Who oh, I was going to say, please explain Sweden. It's a country. Oh. It's in Europe. <laughs> oh, the, uh, the, the, we refuse to lock down. So we'll get herd immunity immediately. And then every doctor in the country was just like, for the love of God, stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can explain Sweden. Yeah, I was going to say, well, that was, one of the, that was one of the earliest case studies of, like, can you directly compare two countries right next to each other for how they responded to it? And it's uh, compare Sweden's infection rate, hospitalization rate, and uh, death rate to Norway and everyone else around them. And you will see that Sweden did not do as well as everyone else. It's pretty straightforward. No. 
well, the, I know that the, the current cases and deaths are quite low in Sweden, but that's because Swedish people are just awkward and they don't really, you know, <laughs> communicate with people anyway. They're just an awkward <laughs> culture. So, you know, so like, they're, they're, they're I mean, always they're... social distancing. They're trying to get away from people. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't, so I don't they, know what the so... population density is there either. So I, I couldn't. I, so, like so it's a combination. See, that's the thing. It, it, there's other factors that play into these things. You know, it's not, you can't just take one thing and go, oh, you know, they didn't really heavily mask or they didn't heavily do this or they didn't, you know, heavily, you know, lock down. It's there, there's other factors that come into play, I, you know, culturally, if they really don't like deal with each other, you know, that's going to, that's going to show that, better outcomes. Also, that, there's one major thing that a lot of people don't understand when it comes to Sweden. The government doesn't have the right to do a lockdown. They can't do it unless in the time of war. So I actually was tripped up on this with a Swedish person. I went, well, why don't you lock down? He gave me the whole explanation that as part of their constitution, the government can't do it. Local locals, uh, like local towns can, can do a lockdown, but the federal government, well, the equivalent of the federal, the Swedish government can't actually do it. So they wanted to do it, but they couldn't. Yeah, we have, um, there's also been so many things that we found out about like the American government since all of this. Had, like there's a lot of towns that actually had curfews that were on the books uh, that were just not enforced until yeah. COVID happened. Uh, and then it's gone from, uh, for whatever reason, like states are intervening with like, the state of Florida is telling local jurisdictions that you can't have mask mandates Whereas like California is telling local jurisdictions that you have to have mask mandates. So it's, it's all over the place here. <laughs> all right. So do we have anything else we want to get to that we haven't gotten so, to yet? Cause we're yep, so we in two hours right now. Yeah. yeah so there is one more comment to? that I wanted to bring up here. So should the grandparents elderly who choose not to abide by the precautions be allowed to choose how they live their final years? Who has the authority to yes. make that for them? I mean, so yeah, I, yeah, they you absolutely to, can. Yeah. And, and really anybody can we're we're libertarians we we not for mandates and you know that kind of stuff coming from the government but we're definitely good for you know we're definitely for making good choices that impact you and others around you but yeah uh you know grandparent that, um, that doesn't want to you know have precautions or you know be vaccinated absolutely they are more than free to do that if you visit lots of islands and don't want to take precautions you're absolutely free to do that uh, we're gonna have like this is actually gonna get cut up and then posted to Twitter, and he's gonna talk about us, isn't he? Like it's gonna happen. <laughs> All right. So even with that, um, yeah, you should absolutely have final decision on like how to in like if this is how you want your life to go, feel free. My only caveat with that is that. If you choose to ignore the precautions that are set in place to protect other people from you, you should be held responsible for that. Um, for instance, you do not have to wear a mask to go in certain stores. If you go in certain stores and then cough on somebody and they're angry about that, they are they are justified. Um, if you are a public school teacher and you don't want to wear a mask and you are the person who kicks off a COVID outbreak in your school, you sh should be held legally responsible for whatever happens to any of those kids because you are a government agent in an enclosed space with our children. If you're opting to cough on them and they get sick because you didn't feel like the precautions were necessary, that's entirely on, on you. And that goes for any – like. I always compare this to drunk driving or to just driving recklessly, not necessarily drunk driving. But if you have no obligation whatsoever to wear a seatbelt, you have a lot of obligations to not hit other people with your car. That's where I'm like, that's where I'm drawing the line here for this is that however you want to make bad decisions that only affect you feel free. But I would still say that you have a personal moral obligation to do other things. Do I think do I think that all speed limits are absolutely imperative to be followed? No. Do I break them on a regular basis? Don't say it on camera. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> in case the cops are watching. Well, no, I don't. But um, I do. 
it's it's risk assessment you know what yeah if the speed limit's 65 and you know 75 is safe because there's you know it's a wet dry flat road then you you go 75 because the the risk for you to cause harm to you or others is is less just because right. it says 65 doesn't mean that you're you know, your car explodes at yeah. 75. So, yeah. But if you're texting while driving 80 through a school zone, yeah, you should probably be stopped by someone. Um, in the, in the same instance, if you're going into public places, you've refused to be vaccinated and you're not wearing a mask. You're a prick. I'm sorry. Like this, the mask isn't to protect you from the environment is to protect the people around you from you. Um, if you're, and if your reason for not getting the vaccine is that you have a medical, uh, you know, a re reason to not be vaccinated, that's fine. Wear a mask. It's okay. Like, it's it's not a symbol of submission to the government because, I mean, I live in Ron DeSantis' state. I think that everyone, the government here would be happier if we didn't wear masks. They're telling us that we're not allowed to in certain places. Like, there's actually, uh, depending on where you are, there's businesses that refuse to even deal with you if you are wearing a mask. Um, one of the things that came up last year was that in a lot of places, masks are actually banned because it's so incorporated into like the legislation of an area that you can't wear a mask because those laws are still in the books from when the Klan existed the oh first God. time. Um, so there we go. So it's At that point, it's not about whether or not you're doing this to, and I don't, and depending on where you are is that's more important i think that the i don't like the fact that government facilities exist at all to be honest with you but the fact that they exist they are obligated to protect the people who are inside them um i think it's an, an atrocity that like there's places where prison guards are not required to wear masks especially when they're dealing with like outbreaks of covid oh, yeah the prisons are like a cesspool of covid yeah so it's an absolute atrocity to me that we're holding people in cages against their will uh, mm -hmm. A lot of them for victimless crimes. Don't get me wrong. The murderer should still be there, but um, uh, it, you're already locked up for a crime that didn't hurt anyone except you. And now the guards are allowed to give you COVID because they don't want to wear a mask. Uh, but depending on where you are, like the state of Florida trying to ban um, the uh, cruise lines from checking vaccination status or, you know, requiring masks and the state intervenes to stop that from happening. Private businesses absolutely have the right to refuse service if you're presenting an immediate threat to other people by not following standard safety precautions. Um, and governments have an obligation to not serve as an exponent in a pandemic. You cannot allow the government to be what allows the virus to multiply. And so I think that, I don't know necessarily, I, I would need to familiarize myself more with like, what school layouts would need to be in order to prevent uh, like COVID transmission. Like I don't want to get into like your desk should be either three feet apart or six feet apart, depending on the class. I hate that. that no one's, <laughs> no yeah. one's going to read that. No one's going to follow those rules. I guarantee you no one's going to care, but I think that if you can be vaccinated, you should. Um, if you, you know, are a, I think you should probably be wearing a mask if everyone around you is not already vaccinated. Um, like if, if I'm hanging out with my friends who all are already vaccinated, I'm not going to wear a mask. It's we're safe with each other. I'm not worried about that. But if I'm, you know, in public at a grocery store um, and I'm, you can be asymptomatic and spread it. So I don't want to be like, I don't want to accidentally be the person who says hello to someone behind the cash register and now they have COVID, and now they're spreading it to everyone in line at a Publix in Florida. The so. solution is to, is to just make everyone become Swedish. <laughs> and and COVID would be dead overnight. We can all we can all dye our hair blonde. Yeah, <laughs> and, and change uh, John Hillstrom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm partially should... Swedish. Yeah. So uh, wh whoever. Whoever needed these questions answered, if you want like the um, the peer reviewed sources, you can either find them on Google Scholar or contact me and John or yeah. whoever else might have our contact yeah. information. I'll send you the information yeah. there. It's 
if it's behind a paywall, we can get it for you. If it's not behind a paywall, it's free on Google Scholar. Yeah. All right. Does yep. anyone we'll have just anything they want to say? Oh, before they say message, before our, up? message our page or um, yeah, message our page or um, us on Twitter, and we'll 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 get you hooked up with the data. Otherwise, you, next. I love next the way week, you said get John, you hooked up. Next next podcast, John, our our island special. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, that, yeah, we gotta we gotta tease that, but we haven't announced <laughs> that yet. So no. let's keep it under wraps. <laughs> but uh, I need to know about this. <laughs> but I, I appreciate Jordan coming on a podcast he's co-hosted before and co-hosting <laughs> and, <laughs> and telling us stuff and like telling us why we should all get microchips and how to how to fix the five G when it goes out. You just have to restart the router. Um, yeah. So. Uh, Jordan, you have anything you want to say before we wrap up? Just I'm going to close um, right after that. But Yeah, if you can be vaccinated, go get it. If not, uh, write your government representatives and tell them to allow the doses that we're not going to use to be shipped to countries who will actually take the vaccines. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for watching, and we'll see you again in two weeks. See you. Buy shirt, get money. No, no other way. We get money. You send money, we get shirt.